How many arguments should a function have? Well, zero is a good number. Right, because it's really easy to understand a function that takes zero arguments. You don't have to worry about any if statements in there that are checking the arguments for anything. There's no arguments. One is not too hard to understand. One argument going into a function is pretty easy. It's, you know, mathematical f of x. We kind of get that. Uh, two arguments going into a function. Yeah, it's okay. You know, the human brain is pretty good at keeping two things in order. There's only two different ways to order them, so not too hard. Three arguments. It's a little hard. How many ways are there to order three arguments? Six. Yes, it's n factorial. So, ooh, six is hard. Now, humans can probably do that, sort of. Um, what about four? How many ways are there to order four arguments? 24. 24 different orders. How about five? 120 ways. It's n factorial. It climbs enormously fast. So, probably don't want any more than about three arguments in a function. That's the way I like to limit it. I don't like to have functions that take more than three arguments. And, by the way, there's another, there's another um, debate here. I almost used the word argument. Um, if you have a function and you want to pass six things into it. Those six things are so cohesive that they can be passed into a function together. Why aren't they already an object? There's an interesting debate to have here. You probably never need to pass more than three things into a function. So I, I like to use that as a, a soft rule. I don't want to see a long comma separated list of arguments. That seems to me to be rude. I would like it to be polite. So keep the number of arguments down to two or three. Create objects if you have to. Use other strategies to, to get things into functions uh, by creating objects and data structures, things like that.